All right, guys, this is going to be a little bit of a different video. I want this to be the be all end all tutorial for anybody who wants to get into playing Phantom Knights. Let's jump into it real quick and you'll see what I mean. Be sure to use the timestamps below to your advantage. As I mentioned before the opening, this video is meant to serve as a de facto tutorial for anybody who wants to pick up and learn Phantom Knights. And we'll be discussing important things such as the aspects of cards themselves, what they do, what they search, extra deck monsters, engines, tech choices, and there will be timestamps below for anything you need, so be sure to use the segments and the timestamps, everything there to jump around and see what you need. So cool. Let's jump into the first and most important thing, the main deck monsters up here. So your core main deck monsters and ratios for Phantom Knights should look like the above. Three, the Phantom Knights of Torn Scales. Three, the Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. Two, the Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak. One, the Phantom Knights of Ragged Gloves. And optionally, one, the Phantom Knights of Stained Greaves. Why should it look like this? Let's explain real quick. The Phantom Knights of Torn Scales is known as a one and a half card combo. So it plus any discard will start your combo. Wow. This is what we call a starter. So you want to see this in your opening hand. So you should run as many copies of it as possible. Okay. It is the best normal summon of the archetype. It also has a second effect where it can revive itself once per turn anytime a Phantom Knight card is banished from your graveyard. I'm back, baby. Which every Phantom Knight monster has a secondary effect they can do when they are banished from the graveyard. And we'll get to those as we progress through telling you what each main deck monster does. So next is the Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. Silent Boots is what is known as an extender. It can special summon itself to the field to extend your plays, giving you a second body on the field or link or exceeds plays. It's easily accessible in your archetype. You can search it through your combo and you'll want it multiple times throughout the course of a duel. And it's also not even bad to open as it has utility as a searcher. What's a searcher? Uh, let's talk about that too. Next is the Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak. When it's in the graveyard, you can banish it to search any the Phantom Knights card from your deck to your hand. Silent Boots, as we just discussed, has a similar effect, but mainly for spells and traps. Unlike Boots though, Cloak cannot special summon itself to the field, so it's not an extender and it will eat up your normal summon. I mean, you don't want to max out on it, but you don't only want to use the effect one time, so two is the perfect amount for you. Nice. This is where we do have to discuss one quirk of the deck though. When searching cards with both Ancient Cloak and Silent Boots, you will notice they specify based on name, and not specifically just they, they can search spells or traps. For example, Ancient Cloak says it can add one The Phantom Knights card from the deck to the hand, while Silent Boots specifies that it can add any Phantom Knights spell trap from the deck to the hand. Understanding this is very key to understanding the deck. Every card is a Phantom Knights card, but not every card is a THE Phantom Knights card. Next, we'll talk about the Phantom Knights of Ragged Gloves. Ragged Gloves is a card that will allow you to send any Phantom Knights card from the deck to the graveyard. It also cannot special summon itself in any way. This is why we only play it at one. It's a normal summon with a really good graveyard effect. Usually you're gonna send off one of the spells of traps, or you're gonna dump a relevant monster that you need to the graveyard. But the Phantom Knights of Stained Greaves, as I mentioned earlier, it's optional. This card is only played at one because of its secondary extender effect can come up due to Silent Boots only being able to special summon itself once per turn. And its graveyard effect is also somewhat useful due to being able to banish itself from the graveyard and special summon extra knights out of the hand. So that's it for main deck monsters. Let's talk about extra deck monsters that are pretty important to the archetype itself. So the first one we're going to cover is Cherubini Ebon Angel of the Burning Abyss. So this is not an in-archetype card, which is what we're mainly covering now, but it is key enough that it may as well be. It's made with two level three monsters, and you'll play this card in nearly any Phantom Knight deck. It is usually the first extra deck play you will make. It sends any level three monster from the deck to the graveyard, all of your Phantom Knight monsters are level three. Several of the monsters in your secondary engines are level three. And this this monster helps set up your graveyard and your boss monster. Speaking of your boss monster, that would be the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. This League Theory monster is your primary boss monster, allows you to send a Phantom Knight monster from the deck to the graveyard and set any Phantom Knight spell trap from the deck to the field. Then if a Dark Exceeds monster is special summon to any yeah, of its link wow. arrows, you can destroy any card on either field. Right. Anyway, I started blasting. Bang, wow. bang. Well, I don't see so good, so I missed. Then they ran away. I ran after them. Okay. Bang. You tend to use this in combination with Breaksword, who we'll discuss right now. The Phantom Knight's Breaksword is your primary rank three Exceeds monster. You'll summon it and either pop it with Rusty Bardish, or you'll use its secondary effect to pop a card on your opponent's field and itself to trigger its secondary effect. Its secondary effect revives two Phantom Knight monsters from the graveyard and makes them level four, locks you into dark monsters, and then this allows you to make a link mo or a link play or a play for a dark level four Xyz monster, which will tend to be Raider's Knight. This is a dark rank four monster that you will tend to go after you pop Breaksword and brought your two Phantom Knights back 
Its effect is similar to a minor rank up magic in that it can go up or down by one rank into any Raid Raptor, Phantom Knight, or Xyz Dragon monster. This card is used in combination with Arc Rebellion Xyz Dragon, whom we'll discuss in just a minute, and is usually used to set up an OTK. You run one, but two is not unheard of. So here is Arc Rebellion Xyz Dragon, who we were just discussing a moment ago. This is a walking OTK. It gains the attack of every monster on the field, aside from itself. By using one overlay unit, it gains the attack points of every monster on your field. If it still has a Dark Xyz monster like Raider's Knight attached to it as material, when this effect resolves, then it negates all other monsters on the field, and it becomes the only monster you can attack with that turn. Next, we'll discuss Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon. This is the anime boss monster of Yuto. An old, good, rank 4, detach both of its materials, target a monster on the field, cut its attack in half, gain that attack. It's a stepping stone to an another monster, optional to run. So next, we'll discuss Dark Requiem Xyz Dragon. This is the monster you use rank up magics to get into from Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon, whom we just discussed a second ago. It needs to have Dark Rebellion attached to it to get its effect. It is a non-once-per-turn, non-once-per-chain negate. This means as long as it has material, it can negate monster effects. It also has a similar effect to Dark Rebellion in that it can target one monster on the field, detach a material, change that monster's attack to zero, and then gain that attack. So it can lead to some pretty wacky OTKs. If you decide to run Dark Rebellion, I'd say this card is mandatory as well. And that's really it for the main deck and extra deck monsters. Next we'll discuss the archetype spells and traps. These are cards that you have access to search and dump to the graveyard off your Phantom Knight monsters. So the first one we're going to look at is Phantom Knight's Fog Blade. Phantom Knight's Fog Blade is the main trap you'll be searching and running. It is an in-archetype negate. It stops your opponent's monsters from attacking. Or in a pinch, it can stop your monsters from being attacked. Hands down, it is the best trap card you have access to. Like all Phantom Knight traps, also has a graveyard effect where it can banish itself and bring back a Phantom Knight monster from the graveyard. So it's a built-in Monster Reborn. First, I'll play Monster Reborn to bring my ancient lamp back from the graveyard. It is a two to three of, no questions asked. Phantom Knight's Wing, this is a one of, it's a boost by 500 attack, has destruction protection onto the monster that you target with it. And you mainly just dump it to the graveyard with Ragged Gloves to set up that Monster Reborn effect that all these traps have. Phantom Knight's Sword, another one of, it serves a similar purpose to Wing. If you're sitting on like an Opelosa, you can boost the Opelosa, giving it an extra monster negate. But you either run this or Wing, this comes down to discretion and thought. Next, we'll discuss the Phantom Knights of Shade Brigadine. This is an interesting trap in that you see it has the V Phantom Knights name, so this can be grabbed off of Ancient Cloak. This is a trap that you can set, and as long as you don't have any traps in the graveyard, you can activate it and summon it as a normal monster. You'll sometimes see this in other decks, like I don't know, Trap Tricks is pretty famous for playing it. If you want to run this, it's a one of, it's searchable, it's not bad. Next, we'll discuss Phantom Knights Rank Up Magic Force. This is the new Phantom Knights Rank Up Magic spell. It's an in-archetype rank up magic used for mainly making Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon or Dark Requiem Xyz Dragon. You, you can't, this is not a card you can just toss in and use. Your deck has to be built to make those rank up plays. And lastly, we're gonna discuss the Phantom Knight's rank up magic launch. This card is mainly used for summoning Evil Swarm Ophion. It can also be used in some really degenerate combos for DDD Duo Don King Kali Yuga to basically skip your opponent's turn. Only run this if you plan on making one of those monsters. Don't use both rank up magics. Before we move into the next section, if you guys like this, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. It helps push it into the algorithm. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into the next section. Next, we're going to discuss the Burning Abyss Engine. The Burning Abyss Engine consists of four cards. It consists of three Tour Guide from the Underworld, one Graf Maul Branch of the Burning Abyss, one Seer Maul Branch of the Burning Abyss, one Cherubini Ebon Angel of the Burning Abyss. The goal of this Wait. engine is to normal summon Tour Guide using its effect to special summon Graf from the deck, and then using these two to link away into Cherubini. And then that will trigger Graf's effect to special summon Seer from the deck. You then use the effect of Cherubini to send a level three monster from the deck to the graveyard. What you send will depend upon what kind of variant you're playing. This line is mainly used to set up Rusty Bardish. So you take these two and you put them into the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. And then that will trigger Seer in the graveyard to bring back Cherubini. So then this gives you extension and it gives you Cherubini back so you can set up for something like SP Little Knight. And all of this is possible off that single tour guide from the Underworld. Let's go on and look at the next engine, shall we? 
Next, we're going to talk about the Speedroid Terror Top Engine. The Speedroid Terror Top Engine consists of about two to four cards, one to three Speedroid Terror Top, depending on what limitation Speedroid Terror Top is at, and then it consists of one Speedroid Takatomborg. This is what you search off a of Speedroid Terror Top. What this engine aims to accomplish is to simply just set up a Link 2 in Cherubini, Ebon Angel of the Burning Abyss, or a Rank 3 without using your normal summon. Special Summon Terror Top, use its effect on summon, search out the Takatomborg, and then make your link too. Easy as that. Let's move on to the next engine, shall we? So the Raid Raptor engine consists of five cards. Raider's Knight, which you play naturally. Raid Raptor Brave Strix. Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon. Raid Raptor Glorious Bright and Phantom Knight's Rank Up Magic Force. The goal of this engine is to set up a spell trap negation, which Phantom Knight cannot do on its own, and an unaffected towers boss monster. Ensure you have access to Silent Boots somehow. Here you can see we have Cloak in the Graveyard, so we'll have access to it here in a moment. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna banish Cloak, search out Boots. This will trigger the Torn Scales in our hand. It'll special summon itself out of the graveyard. I'm back, baby. And then we'll special out Boots. And we'll make the Phantom Knights a Breaksword. This will trigger Rusty Bardish since we have made a dark Ixies monster in a zone that Rusty Bardish's arrow points to. Now, since the Phantom Knights of Breaksword was destroyed, special Quack. summoning back two Phantom Knight monsters and making them level four. And we can overlay once again for Raider's Knight. And we can declare the effect of Raider's Knight to rank up, ensuring we detach Silent Boots specifically, going up into Raid Raptor Brave Strix. Now here we'll go ahead and declare Silent Boots, banishing it from the graveyard to search our rank up magic. Now that we have that in hand, we can detach and declare the effect of Brave Strix. This will allow us to set Raid Raptor Glorious Bright from the deck to the Spell and Trap Zone. And now we can go ahead and activate Phantom Knight's Rank Up Magic Force, banishing five dark monsters from the graveyard, targeting Brave Strix, and overlay into Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon. This is what this engine does. So now we have Raid Raptor Glorious Bright, which will allow us to target a card on our opponent's field and negate it. This includes spells and traps. We have Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon, a boss monster, which is currently at 4,500 due to the effect of Brave Strix. And then we would have four cards in our hand left because we set all this up off of Tour Guide from the Underworld via the Burning Abyss engine. So let's move on to the next engine, shall we? Next, we're gonna move on to the MX Saber Invoker engine or package. You can debate about which this is, but at the end of the day, we're gonna discuss it either way. What this package or engine aims to accomplish is to stick Utopic Future Draco and Zodiac Dryden onto the inboard. This is more applicable to Master Duel than it is the TCG. So this package consists of seven cards. It consists of one main deck Zodiac Monster, Levier the Sea Dragon, MX Saber Invoker, Zodiac Borbo, Utopic F-Zero, and Utopic Draco Future. So this is the way the combo works. Let's go ahead and set it up, shall we? So in this instance, you essentially need three level three bodies and a PK to get banished so you can bring it off Levy of the Sea or you so you can bring it back off Levy of the Sea Dragon. So we're gonna start off with Speedroid Terror Top declaring its effect. This gets us our buddy Takatom Board, who we can go ahead and special summon immediately. As I showed you moments ago, this gets you Cherubini really easily. And we're gonna go ahead and declare its effect sending Graf, and then Graf will get a seer, and then we'll use our normal summon on the Phantom Knights of Torn Scales. We'll declare its effect, discarding the card in our hand. And with Torn Scales, we'll send Ancient Cloak to the graveyard. Now we can go ahead and overlay these two for Levier the Sea Dragon. And we can go ahead and banish our boy Ancient Cloak in the graveyard, getting ourselves a copy of Silent Boots. And then we can declare Levier the Sea Dragon, detaching Seer specifically, bringing back Ancient Cloak, and that will trigger Seer to bring back Graf. Now we have our materials for Rusty Bardish. And we can go ahead and declare its effect. And we can just send Ragged Gloves to the grave. Now we can go ahead and special out Silent Boots, overlay it into MX Saber Invoker, detaching Silent Boots, declaring Invoker's effect. With it, we'll bring out Zodiac Whiptail. And now since we have two rank threes on the board, we can overlay them into Utopic Future and then immediately overlay into Utopic Draco Future. Then, since that Zodiac is just chilling there, we can overlay into Borbo and overlay into Dryden. Now, the same combo can just be accomplished off of Normal Summon Tour Guide plus Extender, and we didn't fully resolve Bardish. We should have a Fog Blade back here. So, all of these packages kind of flow together. So, next up, we're going to discuss the Adventure Engine. The whole concept of this engine is to set up Wandering Griffin Rider as an Omni Negate, 
So this way you can play around Nibiru the Primal Being on your turn, and then something like Evenly Matched on your opponent's turn. The Adventure Engine is fairly commonplace at the time of recording this video, and it consists of about 8-9 to nine cards. It consists of 2-3 to three of Water Enchantress of the Temple, 1 Wandering Griffin Rider, 1 Fateful Adventure, 2-3 to three Rite of Aramisir, and 1 Dracovac the Rideable Dragon. So let's show you how this engine functions. So if you don't have access to any pieces of the engine, you would start off doing something like this, Normal Summon, with your level 3 extender, link them off for Cherubini, and then use the effect of Cherubini, which gives you access to the engine at any point by sending Water Enchantress to the graveyard. Then you would simply banish Water Enchantress from the graveyard, which gets you Rite of Aramisir to your hand, and then you activate Rite of Aramisir, which grants you an adventure token, and places Fateful Adventure from the deck face up on the field. And now you can declare the effect of Fateful Adventure and search out a monster that mentions adventure token in its name. This would be Wandering Griffin Rider, and then discard a card. In this instance, it's going to be Upstart Goblin. This is our blank card in hand. And then you can go ahead and declare the effect of Wandering Griffin Rider and special summon it to the field. And declare the effect of Faithful Adventure, getting Draco back the Rideable Dragon a hand. There are different ways to do this to make this a little bit more efficient, but this is the way I'm choosing to show it here off of Cherubini. There are different ways to do it to make it a little bit more efficient, such as when you summon to be able to search the griffin, or if you open multiple copies of the Enchantress. Enchantress itself can be a level 3 extender since it can special summon itself if you control a adventure token already, but this is just how I'm choosing to show you it here. Let's move on to the next engine, shall we? Then the next and last engine we're going to tackle is the Horus engine. The Horus engine consists of three Msetti Glory of the Horus, one to two different Horus names. These are kind of your garnets of the engine because they're not as good as Msetti. They kind of do nothing in the hand and you want them in the graveyard. And then you also play two to three of King Sarcophagus. This is what you're searching off Msetti, but it also is not the worst to open either because it's essentially just a foolish burial for your Horus names. So the whole point of this engine is to set up either Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord to help you play around Nibiru the Primal Being on your turn, or as just an extra interruption itself. The alternative thing it can do is set up the Zombie Vampire to help you set up your graveyard for your Phantom Knights plays. Let's go ahead and show you real quick how this engine works and what you do with it real quick. So we just have Imseti and two blank cards. So you would declare the effect of Imseti, sending itself plus another card to the graveyard, and you would search out King Sarcophagus, and you would draw a card. Then you would activate King Sarcophagus, declaring its effect, sending a card from your hand to the graveyard, and you would send the other Horus name to the graveyard. And now here, these guys can immediately, since you control King Sarcophagus, special summon themselves to the field. And now you can overlay for Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord, or alternatively, you can make the zombie vampire here and declare its effect, detaching and milling four from your deck to the graveyard. And as you see, you hit some Phantom Knight's names and then you can special summon one out and you're good to go. But that's the last of the engines we're gonna cover. Let's move on to some tech cards and tech choices you can make. And just to wrap things up real quick, we're gonna cover a few miscellaneous tech cards that I couldn't really fit into anywhere else. So first we're gonna talk about reinforcement of the army. This is limited to one. This lets you search out any warrior from your deck to your hand. All your guys are warriors. This is an obvious include. Next up, we're going to discuss Kagamucha Knight. Kagamucha Knight is a level 3 extender that you can summon out as soon as you summon a level 3. Now, this usage depends on if you're playing TCG, OCG, or Master Duel, since each game follows different hand triggers. So basically, in the TCG, this will block your tour guide from being Ash, since it would summon Chain Link 1 tour guide, Chain Link to this before your opponent gets a chance to respond with Ash Blossom. This is a lower priority run in Master Duel and the OCG, but a higher priority to run in the TCG. Next, we're going to talk about Psychic Wielder. Psychic Wielder, you can special out of your hand if you control a level 3 monster. It's just a generic level 3 extender. Psychic Tracker is the same thing. So why do we play these? Because you can also play three Emergency Teleport, which tutors them right out of the deck. And then one more corner case usage is Sangan. Sangan acts as an alternative target for Tour Guide to get out, where you can go Normal Summon Tour Guide, Tour Guide, bring out Sangan, link them into Cherubini, as you saw earlier with the BAs. But Sangan will trigger here to search out one of the Psychics. This way you can special it from your hand when you use Cherubini to send off one of the BAs. Next up is Evil Storm Ophion. You tend to summon this off the old rank up magic, and I alluded to it earlier when I was discussing the old rank up magic. Uh, the reason you would summon this is there's a deck in the format that really needs to summon level 5 or higher monsters. Think like Cash Tira, think Tier Element. So this monster just prevents that from happening. It's another floodgate monster. 
And the final one is the other monster I alluded to earlier when discussing the old rank up magic. It's DDD Duo Don King Kaliuga. Please try and say that three times fast. Uh, this monster is essentially like a turn skip. There are really in-depth deep wombo combo YouTube combo videos you can see out there of summoning this thing. Only try this if you're really up to some war crimes. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, let me know below. Be sure you hit the like, subscribe, and all that. This video took a long time to edit and get together and shoot and film. If you really noticed real close, you can see my shirt and stuff changing throughout the video it's because I filmed this over the course of a couple of days. I believe it took me about, at the time of this video, I'm about two weeks in the tank in editing this. You can see like my editing style is, you know, a little bit more in depth in this video. I put a lot into this one. If you, if you appreciate that, let me know below. I'll be looking at the response to this one in particular. That's where I've been for quite a while. I think uh, around the time I'm going to get to posting this has been probably three months since I've been posting anything. So sorry for the absence. I'm still around. If you guys are interested, there's a Twitch channel down in the description. If you guys want to go follow me over there, I'm t I tend to be live over there more than I post here. And uh, until next time, guys. Peace. Take it easy.